Obviously, when you talk about communication, specifically written communication, typography is a really important component uh, because that will determine how readable your message is going to be. This video here is going to show you how to create and modify type in Illustrator, and then we'll talk briefly about some concepts that will be filled out more thoroughly in, in other resources in the class. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this type layer right here, and then I'm going to go ahead and open up my properties window. And then I'm going to come over here to the tool window and click the type tool, fourth one down on the left. Now there are two ways to create type in Illustrator. Uh, the first one is, I think, the better one for what you're going to be doing in class, and that's called point type. And why it's called that is because you click and make an insertion point for your type. So anytime you are in type creation mode, Illustrator will put in this placeholder text that will show you the style and size, etc., of the type you're going to create. So it will come in like this, it's already marked. All you have to do is type over this. So I'm just going to type type. Then when I am done creating my type, I can click on my arrow and you'll see now that when I click on it with my black arrow, I get the bounding box, I can click and drag it, I can rotate it, I can even resize it to my heart's content. And I'm holding the shift key here to make sure it stays in proportion. So you can always tell when you have point type because of the way it looks. So you can see the baseline here and it has the bounding box. If I get the wide arrow tool, you'll see it only has the baseline. So the other way is a way I do not want you to use. Just say no. But it may come in helpful in the future if you're ever doing something in Illustrator that has a column of type. So this is called area type or dragging a type box. And so you'll see what I did there was I took my type tool. In fact, let me show you again. I just take my type tool and I drag a box and then it fills it with that placeholder text again. Now I'm just going to type, type, type and get my black arrow tool. So you see I still get the bounding box, but if I click on it with my white arrow tool, you'll see that it still shows that box. And so that's how you know the difference between um, point type and area type. If you see this box around it, it's area type. And trust me, that will make working with it much harder than it needs to be. So just say no. Okay, so those are the two basic ways you can create type in Illustrator. Um, now, how do you go about modifying type? I don't know. Well, let me go back here for just a minute and turn on these layers here. So I'm not going to go over this carefully. This is a good resource if you want to pause the video, but you'll get a handout with all of this information as well. But if you don't understand what the different things are, then you're going to have a hard time understanding how to modify it. So this right here that all the type is sitting on, that's called a baseline. This line here that is the top of the lowercase x is called x height. You can probably guess that this is the cap height and uh, a sender and descender. So typefaces are going to have different links for their a sender and descender. All of those things come into play into how typeface size is determined. Now one really important idea has to do with spacing and that is letting right here. So you see the distance from this baseline to this baseline. That measurement is the letting. That's a fancy word for line spacing. Well, whistle me, Dixie! So that's a very important one to understand as we move forward. Okay, so let's go modify some type. So I'm going to turn these two layers off, turn our creating layer on, and make sure the properties window is active. And then I'm going to come in here and with my black arrow tool, click on the type. And then you can see all of the settings currently attached to this piece of type. So Museo Sans is the name of the typeface. If I wanted to change that, I could drop this menu here to see all my different choices. This is the weight and style. So right now 300, that pretty much indicates a regular weight typeface. And if I drop that menu, you'll see here all the different weights and styles available to oh me. Oh my! And then the size. So 
So this is pretty big right now, 183.25. So if I want to change that, again, I can drop the menu and choose something from the menu. You'll see it gives a preview, which is very nice. I can also go in and click on the up and down arrows and that will allow me to enlarge and reduce the type one point at a time. And always, you can just type in any number in here that you would like to type. And you can be very specific down to decimal points. So I'm gonna just go ahead and add a little bit of more type here. And I can see that that letting or line spacing is really wide open. So I wanna change that, make that much smaller. So again, all the same choices. I think this time I'm gonna go ahead and just type in uh, 120 points just to get that down a bit. And that gets it into a little more reasonable place. And then again, I can go use the up and down arrows to slowly move the lines closer or further apart from each other. So Illustrator will set the letting for you when you create type, but generally that's not gonna be the perfect letting for what you're doing. So get in the habit of really making sure that line spacing is just the way you want it. And make sure that your type always stays very readable. Okay, so this here is kerning. Again, this is not something we're gonna deal with in this video, but if you ever notice that there's a big gap between two letters, you can go and adjust that here. What we're gonna talk about though is tracking, which is overall letter spacing. And you will actually use this fairly often. And so exactly the same way, you can use the drop down menu. Again, it gives you the preview. You'll see the minus numbers make the type much closer together. The positive numbers make it much further apart. And then of course, you can just use your up and down arrow keys. That's it for the basic type settings. Uh, there are more options available if you click here and it will show you the full type window. I'm not gonna discuss that here because you won't be using these settings uh, usually, but feel free to come in and play around. It's pretty easy to figure out what those settings are doing. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you is how do you change the color of your type? If I click on it with my black arrow tool, you'll notice that over here in appearance, um, I can see that the fill is currently black and the stroke is currently none. And by the way, it's almost never a good idea to put an outline or a stroke on type. Unless you're adding meaning, such say if your word is ghost and you want it to be outlined in black with a transparent fill, that you can justify makes sense, adds to the meaning, adds to the concept. But otherwise, it just adds another element that really doesn't add meaning, it just adds complication, which distracts from your message. So I always leave stroke as none, unless there's a very good reason not to. So I suggest you do the same. Yes, dear. So that means you really only have to deal with a fill. And so if I click on this, it will open the window you're kind of used to seeing. So let's see, how about we make it a blue? Very nice. Now, so that's great if you wanna make the whole block of type blue. But what if you wanted the, you know, one word to be a different color from the other words? How do you do that? Duh. Well, you can't use your black arrow to to mark it because that marks the entire block of text. So what you need to do is get your type tool and just drag over the part of the type that you would like to change. So if I go here and let's see, let's make this orange say. And now we have our type as two different colors. And if we click on it with our black type, it is still just that single block of type. Okay, so that pretty much does it. Hope you enjoyed this. It was definitely my type of video.